bad blood. Stephen the Rifleman Flemmy says his relationship with Whitey Bulger was strictly criminal. And more profanities fly in the courtroom. Plus, one of Bulger's alleged victims is found dead two days after his name was dropped from the witness list. And the march toward Election Day continues for the 12 Boston mayoral hopefuls. John Barrows tells us why he thinks he's the man for the job. Now on Greater Boston. Good evening. A star witness took the stand today, and a potential witness is found dead. We have both those stories. First, Stephen, the rifleman Flemmy, took the stand as a witness for the prosecution in the Whitey Bulger trial today. And while the testimony only lasted a few minutes, it ended with fireworks. Adam Riley has more. Whitey Bulger and Stephen Flemmy used to rule Boston's underworld together, but hadn't seen each other for years. Today, they had a reunion, and it wasn't a happy one. After a tense stare-down, Flemmy, who's now a government witness, described Bulger as overbearing and forceful. He said unequivocally that Bulger was an FBI informant and described hundreds of meetings with John Connolly and other FBI agents. Flemmy had only testified for a few minutes when court broke for the day. At that point, he and Bulger traded glares and insults, with Flemmy hurling an epithet at his former friend and Bulger firing back with an inaudible response. Flemmy's testimony continues Friday. All right, and Adam Riley is here along with defense attorney Anthony Cardinelli, who has represented members of the Italian mob. Welcome. First, Adam, how did uh, Stephen Flemmy look? Uh, he's in his 70s now. He's 79, uh, and he looked to me, he was actually brought in early, it seemed inadvertently, by the government, and then had to leave. And it was strange because I came back in the courtroom after he'd been brought in, and I didn't even recognize him at first. My initial reaction was, oh, who's that old guy who's kind of hanging? I haven't seen him before. Because he was wearing a windbreaker, an olive windbreaker, a, a green shirt. And honestly, he looked like I drive up and down Revere Beach to and from work, and he looked like older guys I see strolling on Revere Beach. Um, that being said, when he did take the stand to testify and was trading these withering glares with Bulger, I actually couldn't see Bulger's eyes, but I could see Flemmy's eyes. And I would say he looked as or more poised than anyone we've seen who's taken the stand to testify mm -hmm. against Bulger. A lot of people look scared. A lot of people try to avoid Bulger's gaze, look up at the ceiling. And Flemmy wasn't that way well, at all. He looked completely self-possessed yeah. and confident. He has nothing to lose. He's already serving life, and he's in a, a protected uh, situation right now. So, Tony, this is a moment a lot of people have been waiting for. And before they broke for the day, he only testified a few minutes. He said that Whitey Bulger had had hundreds of conversations with former FBI agent John Connolly, said he was unequivocally an informant. Right, and that's the that's the uh, the moment we've all been waiting for for that facade to finally be ripped off of uh, of uh, Bulger and his defense because the guy who was with him next to him as he spouted to the FBI agents not just Connolly not just Morris but others was was Stephen Fleming and uh, uh, I knew all of this from the hearings back in 1998 when we uncovered the fact that he and Fleming were uh, top echelon informants and and Whitey can say anything he wants. Uh, through his lawyers and the press that I'm not an informant and today. In fact, you remember at one time uh, in a redirect examination of, of, uh, of uh, a witness, uh, they asked him, "If you know that uh, Whitey Bulger was a top echelon informant and Carney gets up, you know, very theatrically says, my client was not an informant. And first thing out of the bat, they, he, he put on a full court, uh, four corners defense trying to stall and, and eat up the clock so that that uh, Flemmy wouldn't make it to the stand. When Flemmy got on the stand, his 15 minutes were pure magic in the sense that he got right to the point that he had killed a number of people, he was doing life, and he avoided the death penalty, and, and, but he had pled guilty to three life terms plus 30 years. So he's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. He's going to come out of jail in a box, as they say. But, but at the end of, of his testimony, it was like the greatest tease in the world. He said, and by the way, uh, I was an informant, and James Whitey Bulger was an informant. In fact, he, he brought the FBI to me in 1974. Basically, Bulger recruited him for the FBI, for John Connolly and Dennis Condon. And that's when their, uh, their informant uh, relationship began, and it went on for 20 years. And they had, as he put it, numerous, numerous hundreds 
of meetings with FBI agents where Bulger informed, gave them information not only about the Italian uh, organized criminal activity in, in the Boston area, but about people in South Boston as well. Why and, do they have this animus now, Adam? Why were they, you, the, the mother effer word at each other? They worked together. They hadn't seen each other in 20 years. Whitey had been on the lam for 20 years. He got away easy in a sense. Why would well, I think, be this? I mean, you could make a case that that's exactly why, right? I mean, Whitey's been gone for all this time, and he's known that Flemmy cut a deal and is prepared to testify against him. So I think, yeah. you know, trying to play armchair psychologist, you could argue that there's been a lot of time for resentment on both sides to fester uh, and, you know, get really, really nasty. And I think that's what we caught a, a glimpse of. I mean, we should, I don't know how specific we can be. It, it's WGBH public broadcasting. But the epithet, <laughs> the epithet that I alluded to, you know, after court broke, um, uh, Flemmy looked at Bulger and in this sort of low, what seemed to me a low, menacing voice, um, said what I'm pretty sure was, you know, the first two syllables, mother, uh, and the yeah. last two syllables I can't say that on TV. That was in response to something that Bulger had said. Now, there was some debate about that in the no. media section. Do you know what Bulger I, I know. What, I don't know yet, but okay. I know it was Bulger that, that, that Started. prompted Oh, the that's response. interesting. I, we hadn't, yeah, at least Bulger I hadn't caught that something once. at him and... and uh, Pro projecting the next few days. I presume that Flemmy now is also going to start ticking off some of the names of the names that Bulger and he killed. Yes. Killed together or King killed singularly. Right. Particularly the two and women. the big yeah. issue is the two women, Deborah Hussey and Deborah Davis. Yes. Uh, Flemmy has already admitted killing both of them. Yes. Did, did Bulger have a hand in it? Will he say that? Oh, of course he's going to say that. Wait, has Flemmy admitted killing uh, Deborah Davis? I'm not sure. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, definitely. Yes. Definitely. He, uh, Deborah Hussey and Deborah Davis was one of the ten murders to which he pled guilty. Actually committing the deed itself? Oh, no, no. no. Well, right, right. well, he, you know, that's, that's the big $264 yeah. question. Who did the strangling? We've heard from weeks that definitely it was, it was Bulger on top of Debbie Hussey. And now you're going to hear from Flemmy that it was that it was Bulger who strangled uh, Debbie Davis to death while he assisted. Um, so I mean, we're going to have hands-on evidence from the two guys that were there, uh, you know, and that's why you see this animosity. Mm -hmm. But it was the natural end to these two, in, you know, informants. That sooner or later there was going to be this either they're going to go off into the into so the. Uh, to, you know, out into the to the ozone, and nobody would know about it. Or they one day would face each other, and you're going to see fireworks. So the two things, Adam. He doesn't want to be known as a as a woman killer right. or an informant, right. and this is going to fall apart. Doesn't want to be known as a woman killer or an informant, and he he wants to establish that he didn't commit the murders in the death penalty states, the World Highlight murders, the Roger Wheeler and John Callahan uh, killings. Well, it's a federal trial. He can get the death penalty anyway, right? No, no, no. He can't. There, there's no. Yeah, that. there's no. There's no death penalty for the crimes for which he is now on trial, but. What's waiting for him in the wings is down in Florida, the, the Callahan murder and uh, the Wheeler murder in Oklahoma. One thing I wonder just really quickly is there's been a lot of debate about whether Bulger will or will not take the stand. Yeah. And I, you're confident he I'm won't? I'm confident he'll never <laughs> take the stand. Even after sitting through however many days of... Never take the stand. He doesn't have the guts to do it. Disappointing.